Hey Internet, Eric here again. I'm back with my final Christmas themed movie, or movie, Christmas themed video of the year. So, and with this one, I'm going to have myself a little Christmas party in my basement. Get in the mood and have some fun. Um, this video here is going to be my top five Christmas movies. I hate this fucking thing. Anyways, top five uh, Christmas movies, but I'm, I like to say they're non-traditional Christmas movies in the fact that they're not the norm. They're not, it's a wonderful life. They're not, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas. It's not a Christmas story. It's not White Christmas. These are films that I love to watch during at Christmas time, but they're from the horror genre, the action genre, comedy. And if you have seen my previous videos... Um, you know what my number one film is, so that might not be too much of a surprise. But there were a couple surprises that my wife w was surprised with when making when I was making this list. Now, again, like I said, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I've just reviewed my favorite Christmas movie of all time. So I'll get that out of the way and keep it short and sweet. My favorite Christmas movie of all time is Gremlins. And I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, Zach Galligan is given Gizmo. A little mogwai for a Christmas present. And eventually he spawns these little evil gremlins. And what they do is they wreak havoc and kill and take over the town of Kingston Falls where Billy is from. And I, like I said, I praised this movie in my previous video, so I'll keep this one this little short and sweet. But I once again, I can't help but praise Joe Dante's use of terror in this film. Like, it is a horror movie. And um, I can't praise the performances enough. You know, Zach Galligan is really good. The wonderful Dick Miller. Um, the the fantastic performance of Polly Holiday here. Okay. And Polly Holiday is the and one of the antagonists. She is the evil, evil uh, real estate owner. And she, when, I mean, you hate her the first time you see her. And then when she finally gets her comeuppance, it's great. Um... The wonderful score by Jerry Goldsmith, how it goes from creepy to happy to, and goofy to creepy again. Um, the look of the gremlins, the animatronic way they, you know, their animatronics, the way they move. The design of the gremlins, the little red beady eyes, the scary scenes. I mentioned this, I'll mention it again. The scene where there will be spoilers when I discuss, you know, certain plot points of this movie. Um, when Billy finds his, um, his biology teacher dead. And that whole build-up, the creepiness of him finding the body to the build-up of the final reveal of what a gremlin actually looks like is fantastic and still spooky. One, a great, great jump scare, a great, great scene in general. Um, but yeah, and it's a good mixture of comedy with the horror. I mean, the gremlins are, also, are there to take over the town and kill and maim, but they're also there to have a good time. And the little sprinkle of comedy here and there works wonders. Great movie. Watch it every fucking year at Christmas, regardless of anything else. This is the one movie that I do watch every year. And yes, I know I'm, I'm very classy with that, but fuck it. Next movie I have in the pile. And the rest of these are not in any order. I just wanted to get Gremlins out of the way, because that is my favorite one of all time, like I said. Next movie we have a good little action flick. Batman Returns. Okay, we got Michael Keaton returning as Batman, but now we have Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman and nasty old Danny DeVito pretty much playing himself, or pretty much playing the Frank Reynolds character from it from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's the Penguin. And this was a great, great follow-up to uh, Tim Burton's original Batman. Um, Michael Keaton once again fucking nails the character of a hard-ass Batman. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer is extremely sexy in this role as Selena Kyle and Penguin is such a disgusting uh, not really human being but I mean he is he's just a deformed human being here and he is wonderful at being disgusting who fucking knew and you know this is just a great great flick. Um, still Got that dark feeling, you know, that Tim Burton's known for. Uh, 
And it's also got a lot of more adult themes. Like, there's a lot of sexuality in this movie. Like, um, there's some good sexual tension and flirty with uh, Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, and then you got Danny DeVito as, uh, as Penguin. And he is just this disgusting, perverted, disgusting, foul man. And when he makes his sexual comments, you just cringe. You're just like, ooh, that's fucking disgusting. Um, the action is really good again. Um, the stunt double, whoever did, did uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's stunts when she, when Catwoman and Batman are going at it, fantastic choreography. Um, and they do a really good job of making Selena Kyle a sympathetic character. I love how she's the small, the quiet, meek secretary. And then after she, I guess, wakes up or changes into the Catwoman persona, she's this badass, take no prisoners chick, and it's it's just so well done, very good. The my a hell of a lot better than uh, than Anne Hathaway in Dark Knight Rises. Can't praise that movie enough. Love Batman Returns. Next one, another action film. We have the wonderful classic, Die Hard. With Bruce Willis, who is probably my favorite, not my favorite actor because he's not a great actor, um, but he probably has made the most movies that I enjoy. And this is great because Bruce Willis plays John McClane, this everyday schlub uh, police detective. And what, what I mean by everyday is this came out when Arnold Schwarzenegger and like Sylvester Stallone were in their heyday and they're like these gigantic muscular men and Bruce Willis you know he's there with his receding hairline he's got a bit of a beer belly you know and what's great is he's the everyday Joe and he's there at the wrong place at the wrong time trying to fix a failing marriage um, and he's caught up at the same time when he's trying to you know win back his wife at her Christmas party. Her Christmas party is taken over by a bunch of terrorists um, led by Alan Rickman. And, which, well, I can't praise Alan Rickman anymore in this movie as Hans Gruber because you know Bruce Willis is the hero. But what's great about this one is Hans Gruber is played by Alan Rickman so well and so charismatic that there's that little bit of you that even though you know Bruce Willis is going to win and rescue everybody, you want Hans Gruber to win. Because it's kind of like I mentioned before, like Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man. They're, they're so charismatic and, and good in their role that you're like, you know what? I might have a hard time cheering for the hero here and I want the villain to win. So that's my little plot hypnosis. I forgot to give a little prop, plot hypnosis of Batman Returns, but it's fucking Batman. Um... Penguin is living underground. He comes out to Gotham, tries to win Gotham over by becoming um, mayor. Batman knows that he's not who he says he is and tries to prove that while also dealing with uh, Catwoman who has teamed up with Penguin and he tries to stop them. Like I said, there's a reason why I forgot to tell you the plot because it's fucking Batman. All right, two more. My next one is a comedy. So you might be able to guess what it was. I saw this in the theaters, and I laughed my ass off every time. And this movie came out in... Shit, I don't see a year. But anyways, I've seen it multiple, multiple times, and I laugh my ass off every single time I see it. It's Bad Santa. Alright, Bad Santa with Billy Bob Thornton as his alcoholic uh, safe cracker. And every year, he teams up with uh, little Tony Cox as, you know, a mall Santa and his elf. And what they do is they scope out every mall that they work at. And what they do is eventually, you know, they crack the safe at Christmas time and they, you know, move on to the next one next year. And wonderful, hilarious performances by um, Billy Bob Thornton. Like I said, Tony Cox is fantastic as his uh, sidekick. We have Bernie Mac as the mall security or the head of mall security, trying to you know 
catch uh, Billy Bob in the act. Lauren Graham uh, from Gilmore Girls, so sexy in this. And it's cool, because what I love about Lauren Graham's character is my wife is a big fan of Gilmore Girls. And the Lauren Graham here is not the Lauren Graham in Gilmore Girls. This is a oh, uh, sexually frustrated woman with a Santa Claus fetish. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but this is also known as, sadly, John Ritter's last film. I mean, he did, like, I think of, of like, the Clifford movie, the, the cartoon, um, before he died. That was the last thing he worked on. But this was, sadly, John Ritter's last live-action film. And John Ritter, I believe, plays the owner of the mall who hires Billy Bob. And he's just so... He's not in the movie very much. With the scenes with him and Billy Bob. Like, Billy Bob is this foul-mouthed, you know, asshole. And... One of the best, one of the best things is Billy Bob's already hung over, and um, there's a conversation between Billy and Tony Cox, the little elf character, and John Ritter, and Billy Bob's just you know, you know, saying you know fuck stick and dick and pussy and all this in front of John Ritter. John Ritter's like you know he's not gonna say that in front of the children, so he plays this like really really worry wart. Worried about what Billy Bob Thornton is going to do in front of the children. And it's just great. Every scene with them two together is fantastic. Billy Bob Thornton just fucking nails this as the grunt, grumpy, drunken curmudgeon who hates fucking life. Has nothing running, you know, going right for him. And he just nails it. Bernie Mac, I'm not a huge Bernie Mac fan. But the scene where Billy Bob Thornton is drunk off his ass and passed out and... It's Bernie Mac talking to Tony Cox, trying to figure out how to pick up Billy Bob Thornton and get him away from all the children. It is hilarious. And yes, there is a reason why it is rated R, because the language is so foul, but done so smart and comedic. I laugh every fucking time. Uh, uh, there has not been you know a viewing of this movie where I haven't laughed. and I laugh at every single joke, every single time. So yeah. Definitely bad Santa. And this is the badder Santa, the unrated version. And there are a few scenes added, you know, more, you know, foul language. And there's a couple um, alternate scenes that are longer. And it's uh, it, they're, they're, they're gold. They're gold. Um, there's rumors of a bad Santa 2. Um, I'm not too sure about that because of the way the movie ended. I don't really think there needs to be another bad Santa. But I'm definitely interested, but I don't really think it'll, you know, have the same charm as this one. Because what's really good, there's another thing in Bad Santa. Is A, Cloris Leachman plays, you know, a cra you know, crazy old lady. Not crazy as in, like, dangerous, but she's um, very senile. And Billy Bob ends up holding up with her and her grandson named Thurman Merman. And I love how... Little Thurman truly believes that Billy Bob is Santa Claus. And their rapport is great. And what I love is how, of course, you see it coming a mile away, how Billy Bob is this mean old asshole. And he's, he's mean to the kid. And he doesn't hold back his language or nothing. But eventually, he comes to love the kid as, as you know, who he is. Um, yeah, Bad Santa. Can't praise it enough. One of my favorite comedies of all time, not just Christmas-wise. Now my final movie. Um, not a lot of people know of this. And I really enjoy it when I find out more people have seen this movie. It is a horror movie that I once saw, um, didn't even know about it, and I was flipping through the channels one day. And I saw A, who was in it, and then I read the plot hypnosis, and I'm like, holy shit, this sounds fantastic. And... Right away, this is another one I try to catch every year on TV, and eventually I just broke down and bought it. We have Santa's Slay, okay, with Bill Goldberg. Now, first off, think of this. Bill Goldberg plays an evil, psychotic Santa. Bill Goldberg is Jewish. So that is great right there. Um, and as you can see, he's... Instead of the the uh, the reindeer, he's pulled by an ox. 
And Santa is, you know, he's been forced to bring cheer and presents to a kid from losing a bet with an angel and for a hundred years and now that hundred years is up and he is ready to be the Santa that he used to be by just destruction and killing everybody um, this also stars um, Dave Thomas and Emily DeRaven from I guess Emily the Raven. I know Emily the Raven from the Hills Have Eyes remake, but I guess she was she was also in that um, show Roswell, and I think she was in Lost as well. Never saw it. But first off, like I said, Jewish wrestler Bill Goldberg playing a killer Santa Claus. That concept right there is fantastic as it is. Um, and there's actually a lot of guest stars in this. I mean, Fran Drescher is in this. Chris Kattan, fucking James Caan is killed. Spoilers within the first five minutes. What the fuck is James Caan doing in Santa's sleigh? There is no reason for him to be in Santa's sleigh, but it is great that he is. Um, and what is great is a lot of Bill Goldberg's lines are puns, and, but they're funny as shit. Like when he comes down the chimney to kill some people. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. That's funny. Um, he walks into a strip club and he looks at all the strippers and says, Ho, ho, ho's. Great, great scene. The violence is so over the top. It is fantastic. I have fun with this movie every single time I fucking see it. I just love this movie to death. Um, and Bill Goldberg looks like he's having a blast too. And where else will you see Santa Claus go into a deli owned by a Jewish man and he impales the owner through the throat with a menorah? That right there is the selling point of this movie. So, there you go. Um, there's my top five favorite Christmas movies of all time. Like I said, I say they're non-traditional because they don't fit the mold of a traditional Christmas movie. Now, don't get me wrong, I love A Christmas Story, and I really enjoyed what I, Danny Kaye, at least, in White Christmas. I love Garfield's Christmas special i love charlie brown christmas and there's also some other mentions that are non-traditional like uh, christmas movies like the black christmas remake is fantastic um but yes this is my top five um i highly recommend seeing any of these that you haven't seen but I, who who here hasn't seen these four i mean i can i'm pretty sure not a lot of people have seen santa's sleigh but everyone who has seen santa's sleigh has loved it so i can't recommend this one enough but yes, that is my top five non-traditional Christmas uh, movies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for subscribing if you are a current subscriber. And if you are new to my channel, hey, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And um, this is, like I said, this is the last of my Christmas videos. I have one more theme coming up before. Um, and it's going to be one of my You Hate It, I Don't videos. And New Year's is coming up, and if you're new to You Hate It, I Don't, You Hate It, I Don't is a concept I decided on where I feel like I'm in the minority of liking a movie, and I do my best to defend it. And all I'm going to say is a little hint is if you're seeing this before New Year's Eve, my You Hate It, I Don't is New Year's Eve theme. So I'll leave it at that. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing. Please comment below. Send me some requests because I do have some requests from people. Um, my friend Mel, she's requested, and I, this will be the next video I do after my New Year's Eve themed New Year's Eve themed movie, and it is my boyfriend's back. I've watched the trailer to that, and it looks like garbage. And she's already told me that it is, so yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, my buddy Gollum, Gollum, and I think it's Golem. How do you pronounce your fucking name? I think it's Golem because you have like a little rock character for your avatar. You've asked me to review the new Star Wars film, which I have seen today. And I will. And I will have two reviews. I will have my first one, which will be as spoiler-free as possible. And then after the movie has been around for a while, give it a two, three weeks, I will have a spoiler light review of that. But, yeah. In closing, um... Cheers, and right now, seriously, go watch Santa Slay. Um, where else can you see 
you know, unlovable Dave Thomas get killed by Bill Goldberg. So, yeah. In closing, cheers and Merry Christmas. And yes, I'm going to actually say Merry Christmas because I don't like the whole Happy Holidays thing about... Because I, I don't like saying Happy Holidays because I feel like I'm forced to say Happy Holidays. I say Merry Christmas because I'm actually tired of people worrying about offending other people. Because there's two more Christmas movies I want to see. One of them is Krampus, which looks really, really good. And the other one is a Christmas horror story. And what I, the reason why I brought that up is with the whole Merry Christmas theme is Walmart has decided to make an alternate slipcover for a Christmas horror story. And they have changed the title of the movie to a holiday horror story. It's 2015. Let's quit worrying about offending people, okay? Um, so in the end, yeah, that little rant's over. Cheers. Go watch a Christmas... I think I'm going to watch a Christmas horror story. And hopefully you are not on Bill Goldberg's naughty list. Have a good one.